11 things to know before you go to Hong Kong. I'm Chris, this is Topher, this is Yellow Productions. We do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining. This is part of our series on Hong Kong. If you want to see more videos about Hong Kong, you'll find links at the end or in the description below. But in this video, we're going to tell you everything you need to know if you're planning a visit to this amazing city. Definitely make sure to stick around with number 9, because I'll be joined by a guest, Nick, a Hong Kong local. He brought me to a Hong Kong cafe. We're going to be having some very interesting drinks. We'll talk about what this is in a moment and what that is too. The first thing you need to know, some general information about Hong Kong. It was originally founded as a British colony in 1842, but taken over by China in 1997. Its official title is now the Special Administrative Region of Hong Kong. Hong Kong is famous for its high rises. There are more high rises in Hong Kong than any other city in the world. It has over 8,000 buildings that are over 14 stories. But Hong Kong, that means something in Chinese. You know what it means? It means fragrant harbor. I can smell the smell of the harbor. You'll just have to come to know what that smells like. But actually Hong Kong is made up of a bunch of islands. It has 263 islands in total. Hong Kong has three main sections. There's Hong Kong Island, which I'm standing on right here. It's divided by this big bay in the middle, Kowloon on the other side, and then beyond is the new territories. You should know Hong Kong is a really noisy place. This is not a place to come for a peaceful vacation. It's a loud vacation. They're doing some construction over there, so there's this rhythmic gong. Gong. And there's a guy over here, he's jackhammering. There's horns, there's sirens. So maybe bring some earplugs with you. Just be prepared for this. But this is a bit of the feeling of Hong Kong. Don't expect Hawaii relaxing in waves, the sounds of the city. The second thing to know before you go to Hong Kong is about the weather. Hong Kong is classified as a subtropical climate. And if you look it up online, you'll see that like the highs are around 30 Celsius and the lows are around in the 10 Celsius, which might make it seem okay, except it's really humid. Like all the time, it's really humid. And so even though it's maybe in the 20 some Celsius today, I'm still melting because of the humidity. And when it's cloudy, you have a little bit of relief, but when it's sunny, it's gonna be unbearable when you come to Hong Kong. So make sure you wear some dry wicking, quick wicking fabrics. Um, the summertime here, like May to October is typhoon season. That's the wettest time. The wettest months in particular, like June, July, August. If you wanna come for the driest months, that's December and January, which probably has the best weather, but also probably some of the highest room rates. The third thing to know before you come to Hong Kong is about getting into Hong Kong. Hong Kong has one major airport, it's HKG Airport. It's located on Lantau Island. It's an artificial thing that they made to build this airport, but it only takes 24 minutes to get into central Hong Kong via the Airport Express train. That's gonna be your best way to get into Hong Kong. It leaves Hong Kong Airport every 10 minutes, which is pretty convenient. It makes two stops, it makes actually three, Sing E, Kowloon, and then Central for Hong Kong Island. But coming into Hong Kong Airport, there's over like 100 airlines that fly there they operate a thousand daily flights so you can fly from almost anywhere to Hong Kong the home airline for Hong Kong Airport is Cathay Pacific Airlines which is probably one of the best airlines to fly in there if you've never flown Cathay Pacific and I actually never have but everybody that I know who has says they love it so definitely check out Cathay Pacific on your way here you certainly could take taxis and buses and things like that into the center of the city but it's actually kind of a long way if you take a taxi or bus and those things are prone to traffic so take that airport train, train 24 minutes to central you'll appreciate it and you can buy these round trip tourist cards which I'll talk a little bit more in the next one but you can buy these at the airport you can buy your round trip when you start and then you don't have to worry about tickets going back and even when you're going back to the airport they have a check-in in in the city so you can actually check your luggage in the city before you get on the train for certain airlines number four this number has been omitted it is unlucky actually you'll find many hotels and Hong Kong won't have a fourth floor because four in Chinese sounds like the word for debt. So we're just gonna move on to number five. The fifth thing you have to know before you come to Hong Kong is about getting around Hong Kong. Simply put, your best way to 
to get around Hong Kong is to use public transportation. The traffic can be maddening, and so use public transportation. The best way to get around is the MTR, also known as the subway, Metro Transit Rapid, I assume. The first thing you'll want to do is to buy an octopus card. It's a stored value card. The one I've got right here, it's actually called the Airport Express Travel Pass. You can buy this one. It's 350 Hong Kong dollars. It gives you round trip on the Airport Express into Central, and then three days of unlimited subway and bus. The MTR runs the subway. They also run the double-decker bus. Here's the subway is going to be the fastest way to get around. It runs all over Hong Kong, Kowloon. If that goes where you want to go, definitely take that. Your second best thing to get around are the double decker buses and this card will work on those too and they're really scenic take some of the ones out to Stanley on the back side sit on the top and it'll be an amazing tour of Hong Kong there are plenty of taxis the taxis are pretty inexpensive uh, but I will say that they do get caught up in traffic and the taxis will charge you extra if you have luggage if you have a lot of luggage just be prepared to pay a surcharge for every piece of luggage that you stuff in that taxi Another good cheap ride in Hong Kong is to ride the Star Ferry. This ferry right back here. Well, there's actually two of them you can see. This ferry goes back and forth from Hong Kong Island to Kowloon on the other side. They pretty much run continuously. It costs like three Hong Kong dollars. Well, give or take a few cents. It's a little more expensive if you're on the top deck. It's a little cheaper on the lower deck. Just buy like 50 cents or something, a little more on weekends. I will say for the best ride and the best view, definitely take the upper deck. And they leave here from the central pier on Hong Kong Island and it'll take you over to Kowloon over to where a great place to see the nighttime show uh, for Hong Kong for the lights that go every night at 8 p.m. But I think one of the best ways to get around Hong Kong is to take the Ding Ding. What's the Ding Ding? It's this thing right here. It's known as the Hong Kong Tram but the reason why it's called the Ding Ding is because it has a bell on it and it goes Ding 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 through central it runs on this one street they go two directions I mean they have endpoints that they go to it's like two or three Hong Kong dollars to ride and the way you ride it you just get on the best place to ride it definitely the top floor try to get a seat right at the front you can take it all the way to the end it's a great sightseeing cruise almost through central Hong Kong and then when you want to get off you get your oyster card you just tap it when you get off and it'll deduct that two or three Hong Kong dollars same fare doesn't matter how long you ride just that fare as you ride it. I should point out though the Ding Ding is not the fastest way to get around Hong Kong but it is probably the most scenic. Hong Kong is a very walkable city. There's sidewalks everywhere and there's staircases everywhere. You should know Hong Kong Island it's built up on a hill and so you will be climbing a lot of staircases and if you notice the elevation difference between where I'm standing and down there it's quite a ways down right there. If you're following Google Maps walking navigation it won't all always give you the flattest route. You might be going up and down and up and down. So if Google Maps has a 10 minute walk, it might be 20 because you might be climbing a lot of these staircases. If you need to get up Hong Kong Island, there's the central mid-levels escalator. And in the afternoon, it'll take you from central up to the top of the hill. Uh, but it only goes one way at certain times of the day. So make sure it goes the way you want it to go. And bring your walking shoes and your stair climbing legs. As you're walking around Hong Kong, you'll notice Hong Kong has a lot of two-story bridges that go over the cities. A lot of times the best way from point A to point B is not down on the street, but it's up on these bridges, as you can see with everybody else who's here with me. So learn to use these second-story bridges to get you over the roads and away from the cars. Since they drive crazy, they'll run you over. They won't if you're up here. The sixth thing to know before we go to Hong Kong is about the money in Hong Kong. They use the Hong Kong dollar. The Hong Kong dollar is pegged or fixed to the US dollar. The exchange rate is between 7.75 and 7.85 Hong Kong dollars to one US dollar all the time. Uh, many places in Hong Kong do take Visa, MasterCard, uh, maybe 40% take American Express. The um, Octopus card that you can use and the MRT or the MTR, you can use that in a lot of places to pay as well. A lot of places are accepting WePay, which is a payment system from China. Um, but I think it's good to get cash, some of the best places to get cash, ATMs at the airports. Hong Kong is a major financial center, and so you'll see a lot of ATMs all around. But I want to show you this about the money something weird about Hong Kong these are both hundred dollar Hong Kong bills and do you notice that they look different this bill right here is issued by the Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corporation you can see it there at the top 
This bill is issued by the Bank of China Hong Kong Limited. There are actually three banks in Hong Kong that issue Hong Kong dollars, and each one of those banks has a different design. So for all of the bills, there are three different designs for them issued by the different banks. The currency is still real and works very well. Just know if you're looking at it and you're like, why does this bill look different than the other one? Is it from a different country that I forgot to put it away? No, they're all Hong Kong dollars. Um, in addition to bills, there's a number of coins. The coins go up to 10 Hong Kong dollars, which can be pretty valuable. So make sure you don't just toss those coins away like some people like me do at the end of the day. The seventh thing to know before you go to Hong Kong is about the language. Hong Kong has two official languages. The first one is Chinese, written Chinese spoken Cantonese as the dialect. The second official language is English. And so you'll find most signs are in English. Most restaurants have English menus. I feel like it's kind of like easy Asia for English speakers, certainly at the five star hotels, even the middle hotels, the high end restaurants, the medium restaurants, where you won't find a lot of English is in like really kind of low end restaurants, maybe street stalls, but you can use the point and order method. Now I will point out, no secret will want me to mention this, that Mandarin is not really spoken here a lot. Actually, I looked up the official statistics and it was something like maybe three to seven percent of the people that live in Hong Kong associate Mandarin as their primary language. So when you come here, if you've learned Mandarin in school or you're a Mandarin speaker, um, more people might actually understand English. I mean, they might understand Mandarin, but you might get some strange looks because they'll look at you and say, don't you know that we speak Cantonese here? But chances are, if you're watching my video, you're an English speaker, and so just know that it won't be that hard to get around in English. The one caveat is if you're taking a lot of taxis, uh, it might be useful to have the hotel tell the taxi driver where you want to go, or have your destination at least written out, so that if you're pronouncing it, you might not be pronouncing it quite the way they've heard it said, because the English here does have a bit of a Hong Kong accent. Before you go to Hong Kong, you need to know about shopping. Hong Kong has a lot of shopping. High-end shopping and low-end shopping. Some of the best high-end shopping is at IFC, the International Financial Center Mall. This is the mall right above Central Station. It's where the Airport Express comes in. It's like three towers, four levels. It's pretty huge and uh, you'll find almost everything in there. Another great high-end mall is called Pacific Place. That's by the Admiralty uh, MTR stop. If you're looking for low-end, more street market stuff, check over the Kowloon side, the Temple Street Night Market, the Ladies Market. There are some street markets out there where you can get things a bit cheaper and out on the street. The IFC Mall is home to a very impressive three-story Apple store. And up on the fourth floor, if you're missing hamburgers, there's a recently opened Shake Shack. But if you're only gonna visit one street market in Hong Kong, you should visit the Temple Street Night Market. First of all, it's at night, so it'll be a little cooler. It's on Temple Street, and it's just a couple blocks from the Jordan MTR station. And uh, it's, I don't know, six, eight, 10 blocks of street vendors, but there's also street food. And particularly popular here is vendors selling spicy crab. This is a must do in Hong Kong because it's something really unique and I've never seen it anywhere else. This is the Goldfish Market, Tung Choi Street. It's in Kowloon. And if we take a look over here, we look over this way, this shop is all goldfish all the time. Well, actually there's other fish too, but you see all these bags up there, all those bags are different fish for sale. I'd love to bring one home, but I'm not sure that I could carry that liquid on the plane. So the ninth thing you need to know before you go to Hong Kong is about the food and the quintessential food to eat in Hong Kong. Is it a Hong Kong cafe? So I'm here with Nick, he lives in Hong Kong and he's brought us this place called Christie Cafe. They have seven locations in Hong Kong and two in Macau. We've got some interesting things here on the table. Nick, tell us, tell them what we have. Yes, yeah, so we have um, three very Hong Kong flavored drinks. This is a um, iced red bean, but bathed in a ever evaporated milk and then we have a, uh, a raw egg boiled in hot milk. Did, did you say that's a raw egg boiled in hot milk? It is. And what, what did we just get here? It's some kind of a smoothie egg and with uh, some beef. So it's, it's like not completely cooked egg, right? It is in the process of completely cooked. <laughs> okay, so it kind of cooks on the table on the rice. And yeah. we've got some Hong Kong milk tea right here. And then, uh, what have you got in front of you? Oh, some um, tomato 
and um, chicken rice. All right. Well, so let's uh, let's try this one. So this was an egg and hot milk, and they give you a spoon, and you can see. Can you see the egg in there? I think you can. There's a little egg down there, and so we stir this up, and uh, it stirs in this condensed milk, and you can see. Oh, here's that raw egg in there. Take a look at this. Uh, let me get that up there for you. Oh, look at that. That raw egg. Ooh, right. And uh, so then we just. We drink this. Yes. Do we need to wait, Nick, or do we just drink it now? Well, if um, if it is myself, I would try to beat it. You'd maybe beat with it. a with a fork. With a, with a fork. Okay, let's do that then. So Nick is now beating the egg. The egg has been bad, apparently. So, so he's breaking up the yolk. Yeah, so that it becomes uh, a little bit well cooked because uh, I am myself afraid of uh, just eating a raw egg. That's good. I appreciate you keeping me safe. I don't want to get sick. Yes. We just came back from a week in Bangkok, and so I'm pretty happy we didn't get sick there. Yeah. So just look at look at this. It's now taking like a like a yellow color, right? That was the yolk being stirred in it. I'm Nick. I'm glad I have you because I don't think I would have done this, and I would have swallowed like a huge raw egg. You know what? I haven't seen anybody ordering it for 30 years. So, so I'm apparently really adventuresome. It is a very adventure. Uh huh. All right. So do you think this is drinkable now? I think it is. Uh, okay, as drinkable as it's gonna be. So it's yellow. You can see some of the egg floating on top. I'm gonna give this a go. Oh, it's actually, it's actually pretty good. Believe it or not. I mean, it tastes. I'll say kind of like an eggnog without the alcohol in it. It's got this sweet, milky taste. I think I really like eggnog without that alcohol flavor. So, I like it. This was a good choice. Thank you. I would have never, or I would, like, I would have looked at this on the menu and said, <gasps> boiled egg and milk. So you can get it and stir it up. All right. And Hong Kong milk tea, this, mm, mm. Hong Kong classic. Hong Kong classic. classic. But what, what makes Hong Kong milk tea special? Well, the tea itself, is uh, it's not just one type of tea leaves. They mix different blend. They kind of blend the leaves together. So it is the blending becomes the every shop's own specialty. And I feel like it has a like a stronger taste than most milk teas. They start off with um, the Ceylon, Sri Lanka tea base, and then they mix it with some Chinese tea, maybe some poor. No, I I I don't know because. Everybody keep that a secret, but it's the different blends of tea. I heard that it can go up to like seven or nine different blends. Wow, and so that's what makes it this strong. So, mm. you can get the Hong Kong milk tea hot or cold, Hong Kong cafes in a lot of different places. So you saw OC Girls and Nick's dish. We've got my dish now. This is stir fried spaghetti with barbecue pork and pork chop. Smells good. It smells kind of like like a yakisoba. Have you ever had Japanese yakisoba? Because I think it's a pretty similar thing. So let's go ahead and try the noodles. Um, mm. It's pretty good. And let's try the pork. This looks like the pork chop. Mmm. Nice porky flavor. And then Nick, yes. he opted for something a little different. He opted for the um, spaghetti with what meat do you have there? Just beef. Just beef. All right. And then, what did you say you're eating here, this red one? Oh, it's a tomato and chicken rice. So it's a rice dish. And what do you like about that rice dish? Oh, it has lots of gravy. <laughs> All right, the gravy's the best. Yes. Well, I'm a big sauce person, so. So that's why I ordered this. All right. Thanks for joining us, Nick. You're welcome. If you want to know more about food in Hong Kong, then you'll want to check out my video titled Hong Kong Food Guide, 17 Things to Know Before You Eat in Hong Kong. In that video, we take a deeper dive into everything you need to know before you eat out in Hong Kong, including why when you go out to eat and you order tea, that there might actually be two teapots on the table. And we take a deeper dive into dim sum, one of my favorite Hong Kong meals, talk about 
what to expect when you go to dim sum and what some of my favorite dim sum items are. Check that out. You'll find a link in the description below or at the end of this video. The 10th thing to know before you come to Hong Kong is about feng shui. The mystical art of feng shui is alive and well and practiced quite a bit in Hong Kong. Feng shui, it's kind of the art of making sure that the energy flows well through buildings and spaces. And so if you look at certain buildings in the skyline, for example, the Hong Kong Shanghai Banking Corporation, the HSBC building, there's that tall one right there, and you look at it and you're like, that building looks kind of weird. It looks kind of off from what you think is a traditional skyscraper. Well, that's likely because it's designed with feng shui in mind. That's the same reason why when you go in your hotel lobby, there might be a water feature, there might be some koi fish, in there there might be some trees in there that's all to keep the positive energy going through that space that you're occupying and the 11th thing to know before you go to Hong Kong is that we've got more videos if you'd like to know more information about Hong Kong you'll find links in the description or you can click one of these videos to watch more about Hong Kong so I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in the next video see you